Today I'm reacting to 10 greatest and unpopular Indian inventions by the channel of Kertika Govindasami. I'm going to subscribe. This is my first video that I check out from this channel. There will be a link in the description so you can watch the original video without my commentary. So yeah, this is super interesting. Let's check it out right away. Isaac Newton and the Apple story. Wait, let's bring it back. When it comes to history, I don't really think our school books do enough justice about it. Everyone knows about the Isaac Newton and the Apple story, but how many of us know about the stories of Ramanujan and C. V. Raman? Let me ask you a I question. Don't know, Name sure. three great inventions that changed the course of the world. Now, when I said invention, most of us would have automatically thought about an English name, a French, a Greek, or to simply say a name from the West. But do you have any idea that India has a rich history? of discoveries and inventions and many of these have significant impact on our day-to-day -day life. So today I'm going to tell you the 10 things that were discovered in India that changed the history of the world. Okay. Number one, diamonds. Today, diamonds. the majestic diamonds of India are once again in the hot spot thanks to the Ambani's, but India has always been known for diamonds since ancient times. Did you know India was the only source of diamond in the entire world until 18th century? Oh. That was just 300 years ago. India is the wow. first country in the world where diamonds were found and traded, and it's estimated that India was trading diamonds as early as 4th century BCE, that is a minimum of 2400 years. And there's a wow. That's but crazy. I'm not sure how true it is. When India was in its golden period, diamonds were sold on the streets like vegetables. In the early what? 1700s, I don't diamonds think that's were found true. in Brazil. Then in the late 1800s, it was found in African countries. Then the whole diamond market shifted to the African continent. So we can literally say any diamond in the world right now that is older than 400 years is of Indian origin. Wow, what's not of buttons? Yes, you got it right. The buttons we use in our clothing on a daily basis was invented by Indians. What you see in the picture is the earliest known buttons in the history of mankind. These buttons with some symbols on it were made out of curved seashells and were excavated from Indus Valley civilization and they are approximately 5,000 years old. Even though these buttons have tiny holes on them, they were primarily used as ornaments but later people eventually started using it to fasten their clothes. The discovery of buttons may sound not so important, but imagine the part it has in the fashion industry today. The global fashion industry is estimated to be... I would say it would be very difficult not to see the importance of buttons. Yeah, I was... Yeah, I can't imagine, like, jeans could never be a thing, for sure. It's worth $1.7 trillion today, and indeed, now is the best time wow. if you're planning to start a business. No fancy and clothes, most basically. importantly, if you're someone who's going to do it from scratch, Odo can be your savior. Odo is an all-in-one management software that provides entrepreneurs with a range of applications to simplify the day-to-day -day management of your payment methods that if you're looking forward to creating your own number three proper toilet and drainage system. You know, I used mm. to get really mad that the drainage system of Indus Valley civilization is being highlighted way too much while other things like yoga and metallurgy are not being talked about enough. Because I thought the toilet and the drainage system were like the basics until I got to know how bad it was in the rest of the world. This is the toilet from Europe in the medieval period. Medieval period means approximately 1000 to 1580 so i know even uh, like uh, i really love learning about history so i know that in the versailles palace in uh, france paris the, they had the whole thing that uh, they would do their business you know and then after they're done with it in the morning they will put out uh, the bowl or whatever with the business inside so yeah <laughs> you can imagine how that would look like and that was the 18th century so yeah come on <laughs> that's pretty crazy if you ask me so yeah the, the whole thing of the toilets is fairly recent that we have good uh, sewers and drainage system
anywhere between 500 to 1000 years old. This type of toilet is called cardrobe and it's usually Cardrobe. located at the top floor of the castle. The people living yeah. in the castle would do their business there and some poor guy would clean their mess below. In another model, wow, it would just end imagine. up right on the streets. Reportedly, there was no water involved. But oh in ancient my Rome, God. it was a little better. Toilets mm, were built yeah, in community dogs. places where men sit together and do their business and the water running below would clean Clear the waste. Now what? Yeah, it? they actually use those. So um, the from the pee, they will collect the pee, the Romans, and then they will use it uh, as an agent uh, to mix in with other stuff to create the detergents. You know, to clean your clothes. They're still doing it now, but of course they are using some chemistry magic you know i don't know anything about science so they don't have to actually use pee but yeah a lot about that i wanted to share disgusting here is they used a sponge attached to a stick to wipe their back after defecation oh and my it was god not a personal property but a public one a person oh my god no don't tell me that oh god using the sponge oh. would dunk it in oh. a bucket of water or vinegar to clean it off oh for my the next god. person to use it oh. now let's see the toilet and the drainage system of indus valley civilization the toilet holes would be flushed by pouring a bucket of water and from there the waste will go through a terracotta pipe and would end up in a cesspit which is literally what we call a septic tank today. From time to time these cesspits would be emptied and the waste would be used as fertilizer and the mm. time we are talking about was 5000 years back. Now That's with the crazy. drainage system many of the buildings at Mahanjadaro had two or more stories and the water they use in the house again would go through you know, if you think about it, it's kind of crazy that uh, we had, so, I mean, in Europe, we had so many, you know, intelligent people discovering so many crazy things with the Industrial Revolution, so many discoveries in the field of uh, medicine and so much more. But nobody really take the time, cr you know, build the crazy buildings that we got today. But nobody really took the time to find a better way to get rid of your human waste. So, yeah, I don't know. Just say, just say they should have put a little bit more effort in that and the Indians could do it like 5,000 years ago. Come on, come on. <laughs> the terracotta pipe and end up in the street drains just like what we do today. So the concept of modern toilets and drainage system was first discovered in India. Number four, sugar. One in six people in the world with diabetes is from India, that is 17% of the world's population. More than 100 million people in India are diabetic, that is 11.4% wow. of the country's total That's population. A lot. So, rightfully, we'll have to climb this one. Originally, sugarcane was consumed raw, like people who chew sugarcanes to extract the sweetness, but you can't preserve it for a long time. So, there was a need. Some accounts say that it was during Gupta's period that Indians learned how to crystallize crystallized sugar using sugarcane juice. But ancient mm. Indian literature like Alda Sastra mentions that refined sugar was already being produced in India. Even the word sugar is believed to be derived from the Sanskrit word sakara, which means candied sugar. So sugar, which literally oh. changed the food habits of the entire human race, was invented in India. Number five, steel and metal works. Oh my god, this is the most underrated one. Ancient in why does she sound so angry when she's listing all of them? <laughs> literally the goats in metallurgy. Have you been to Gudapranag? There's a 1600 year old iron pillar from Chandrakupta's second period. It has been standing there and open in the sun and rain for 1600 years and it has not rested yet. Now imagine how advanced Indian must have been in metallurgy. For over 7000 years, India has had a high tradition of metallurgical skills. We can actually back it up with two sources, archaeological excavations, literary evidences. The first evidence of metal in the Indian subcontinent comes from Balochistan, where a small copper bead dated back to 6000 BCE was found. By 3rd millennium BCE, the Arapan people mastered the art of metal casting. They melted metals like gold, silver, lead, copper and bronze and made variety of objects and ornaments out of it. In an excavation in 1962 near Udaipur in Aravalli Hills, some copper 
copper dots, quartz and glass-like materials were found which dated back to 1800 to 1600 BCE and those glass-like mm. materials were actually the waste product of the copper smelting industry. So this proves there was a systematic copper smelting industry that some 3500 years back itself. Not to mention the first ever form of steel, wood steel was invented in wood India. Steel. It's not exactly clear when it was invented but the earliest mention of this was found in the mm. Alexander's invasion in India. It said that Alexander was gifted two and a half tons of wood steel by Porus. Wow, that's Number so six, cool. Number six, rulers are scales. Honestly, not scales. many of us know about this. Scales or rulers, whatever you call it, it was first used by the people of Indus Valley civilization. Multiple measuring instruments were found at Mohanjada. Was significant one among them were the scales made of ivory that was marked to about 1.6 millimeter. All over the region, the bricks are made of one size. The ratio of the length, breadth and thickness of the brick was 4 is to 2 is to 1. Same size bricks were used for construction all over the region. Number 7. Cotton. India and its weaving history is a never-ending story. As per the latest archaeological evidence, cotton was probably first grown at Mehargarh, which is currently in Pakistan about 7,000 years ago. So far, this is the earliest known to the mankind. And the Indus Valley civilization started cultivating cotton around 5,000 years back. Herodotus, an ancient Greek historian, mentions that Indian cotton is from 5th century Herodotus is not the ancient Greek historian, he's the father of history as we know it today, so yeah. <laughs> but he, he also is an ancient Greek historian. Century BCE, which is 7,000 years ago. By his second, we can also see that Greece was still unaware of cotton at that time. Mm. Number 8, the concept of university. Imparting education has always been an integral part of India. The Guru Shishya Paramparya exists only God knows since when. But the concept of university, that also belongs to India. The first ever university in the world, Daksashila, was established in the 5th century and is approximately 2500 years old. It had 300 lecture halls, a library and a tower for astronomical research. Chinese wow. traveler Hun Sang wrote in his diary that it had more than 10,000 students and 200 professors. What? That includes Panini and Chanakya. Students from wow. as far as Babylonia, Greece, Arabia and China studied that and the university offered 60 different courses in various subjects like science, mathematics, medicine, politics, astronomy, music, religion, warfare and many more. Number 9. Zero. Wow, that was really impressive. Oh my god. It's really impressive because, yeah, the ancient Greeks had, uh, of course, their form of education, also the Romans. But, wow, like a place that you can get all those studies, bro, that's incredible. 200 professors in the 5th century. Oh my god, this video is mind-blowing. I didn't know any of these information, so let me tell you. The number zero, okay. This one we all know. Zero might mean nothing, but the world of mathematics is nothing without it. The modern mm. life we are living today, the technological advancements we have today would not be possible without the dis Yeah, because of the binary code 101010. The degree of zero. The invention of zero made calculations much easier, helping mathematicians to create fields like algebra and calculus, which eventually led to the development of computers. You know, in 5th century BC, Greek philosopher Parmenides claimed that nothing cannot exist. If we have to speak of something, we can only speak of something that already exists. After the birth of Christianity, religious leaders argued, since God is in everything that exists, anything that represents nothing must be satanic and they kind of banned using zero at all. But still oh. people used it in secret. But here in India, the whole concept of Hinduism and Buddhism is the nothingness so or nirvana or whatever you call it. So naturally, zero was born in India. Number 10, yoga. The whole world knows that the art of yoga was first discovered in India. Yoga is an Indian... Yeah, but that's not really unpopular at all, yoga. Everyone knows about yoga. 
integral part of india even the smallest gestures we make on a daily basis like namaste sitting cross legged are a form of yoga but one oh. thing we fail to recognize is how advanced is the science of yoga in 1985 harvard scholar herbert benson and his team visited a tibetan monastery in the himalayas and they found that the monks practiced a form of yoga to control their body temperatures and the team filmed the monks using their own bodies to dry wet cloth when the outside temperature was like minus 20 degrees What? and the monks slept on the rocks peacefully when the oh temperature was like God. minus 20 degrees at 15000 feet high and they were oh dressed God. in light shawls even today we have videos of yogis meditating almost naked in the freezing himalayas That's how insane. do they do it we have this pashupati sila mahayogi seal from indus valley civilization where a man is sitting in a yogic posture completely surrounded by wild animals but still undisturbed we have many such seals from indus valley civilization so we can clearly say the people of indus valley civilization were not the beginners exploring or experimenting with yoga but they already mastered the art of yoga and that means yoga must have originated even earlier than the indus valley civilization period even the contemporaries like the mesopotamian and persian do not have any representation of yogic poses here we are not trying to discover whether yoga was originated in india or not that's not even the debate my point is i want you to understand how advanced the people of india were back in that time compared to the rest of the world today we have so many studies and research about the mm. benefits of yoga about its magical powers but imagine back in that time the people mastered this art when the rest of the world was living in caves india has always been a step ahead of the world i agree that we had a bad face in the history we went through a lot of bad things but i think it's time for us Every to count she has i guess we are doing it already wow what a great video what a great video what a great video i love this the hidden tales wow let me know your thoughts in the comment section and definitely all the inventions that were not mentioned uh, that comes from india that can be attested to the indian country let me know as well because wow i love learning this type of stuff that was super cool lately i've been reading lots about uh, like spiritualism uh, and uh, other religions of india that's super interesting i mean i just finished reading siddhartha the book by hernan has uh, very interesting very interesting so I, i don't know i just like so much to learn about india so yeah thank you so much for all these recommendations and this video was just awesome so yeah thank you so much for watching guys i will see you in the next one